All right, you guys, this is Ross. I have an interesting fig to review today because this fig here is called Princessa. It's one of Pons' favorites. So Montserrat Pons really is the, really the, the most knowledgeable living fig grower today. And uh, when he has something to say, you better listen. So for me, this was a fig that he, was, he likes and he was recommending to a lot of people. And I thought, well, let's try it. It probably isn't going to do the best here in terms of rain resistance or split resistance. And um, the real reason I picked it up is because he believes this one has like an interesting texture to it, which I've learned um, through testing a lot of and trying a lot of different varieties that the texture plays a huge part in which figs I really like. You know, I really like the sticky ones. I really like the jammy ones, the thick ones that are kind of like like a cake almost. Um, you know, figs are like jam on a tree here, guys. And this one, uh, I didn't really get a great representation or a great, um, a great recommendation because, you know, Montserrat Pons speaks in Catalan or Spanish or whatever, you, whatever it is. And translating words over is not always that easy. And um, the point is, is that I believe this fig is supposed to have a more jelly-like consistency to it. That's the, that's the interesting thing about it, is that the texture is supposed to be different. He recommended it basically for the texture. Also, I think he's recommending it for other reasons, but I don't really know what those reasons are. What I do know, though, is that I, I found this interesting, and I thought I should grow it, because this fig certainly is supposed to have a different texture to it. Um, interestingly enough, it did really like we had like a monsoon yesterday uh today is like the day after or two days after the hurricane that came through here uh that hit louisiana it's 2021 here guys uh september 3rd so it hit louisiana then it went all the way up through the northeast and through the south and it just destroyed a lot of people's homes and properties and and we got a lot of rain here probably about a little less than two inches if i had to guess um, I have a friend over in Bridgeport who has a house there and unfortunately the water was all the way up to the height of the cars on the street and that's just so uncommon here um, but he does live in a flood zone he does live right near a river so you know it just really sucks for a lot of people out there who may have potentially been in this hurricane I really wish you guys the best I hope everybody's okay uh, by the time this video comes out, it's going to be a while probably, you know, the hurricane's going to be long gone. But uh, this one did, I picked a lot of them before the hurricane came in. I really wanted to make sure I picked all the fruits in my yard because I didn't want any of them to split or to get spoiled and ferment. And uh, it's a great practice with figs to prevent just something bad happening to them. Um, but even if you leave some of them on the tree that are not maybe so far progressed in the ripening process, they still can have ill effects happen to them. And this one seemed to make it, make it through pretty, pretty well without really any major hiccups. Um, so let me show you guys the fig now. The inside. However, I just... Even though it, you know, I'm saying all that, I just don't think it is really the best for rain resistance. So if you're looking for something that is going to perform well in a humid climate, I just don't think this is the fig, personally. But you never know. So there's the inside. Um, it's a honey fig. And, um, you know, I'm not really seeing the jelly-like consistency that... I saw last year in this fig. And I've seen that jelly-like consistency. I've always described the textures in like three different ways. There's some meaty figs. There's like figs that are like jelly and like kind of like a congealed gel or kind of like a, like a fruit leather. And then there's figs that are very jammy and they're just a lot like jam. Um, and they have different levels of thickness and different levels of stickiness. The the meatier figs are kind of like brown turkey. They have a lot of uh, big acnes to them. And then you can kind of really see this actually in this fig where these acnes are actually what's determining the texture of the fig and how meaty it is. 
So you can see those white portions there, those white little individual flowers, essentially. Inside a fig, there's like 100, 200, 300, 400 flowers, individual flowers that create the texture and create the individual little fruits of the, uh, of the fig. And then they all blend together and essentially create the texture that you experience when you eat a fig. And again, depending on the acnes, it really determines the texture. So let me see if I, I'm gonna eat this and see if maybe I have some sort of interesting observation. Not exactly. I know this is amber. And I know that in warmer climates, maybe if you, it's caprified, I'm sure this will change quite a bit, but especially in warmer climates, the pulp actually turns a bit red and it probably has a slight fruitier berry flavor to it. Um, maybe a mild flavor. This to me tastes a lot like your typical honey fig. There's not a whole lot of difference. You can see that it peels very, very easily. So that's cool. Um, very juicy. This is like a fig that a lot of people would probably enjoy because you know, not everyone likes the thick and jammy and sticky figs that I like. This is more juicy, refreshing, enjoyable. Um, I know Ben in Seattle probably would love this, this fig here. Um, so yeah, like uh, maybe it's not for me, but it's, it could be for you. And it's not my favorite. You know, a lot of the honey figs are just not my favorite. They're not usually that complex. This one tastes a lot like brown sugar and honey and figs. Um, very sweet, very good. A lot of syrup and, and um, honey in there. But yeah, for my money, it's just not my favorite. Uh, it is a very productive variety I've noticed. Produces a lot of fruits. Um, it doesn't seem to really be bothered too much by a lack of light. So maybe it's adapted more to a lower light condition, therefore making it quite a productive variety. Um, yeah, overall, I'm just impressed with the general tree and how it performs and how even the fruits are. The shell of the fruit is pretty good. It'd probably make a decent commercial variety. Uh, you know, I actually think this is overall a very, very good honey fig. It's got great size to it, as you guys can see. I mean, the fruits are big. Um, so I think this is probably what maybe Ponds is sort of recommending to people as a commercial variety, a commercial option. I can see it very easily. Um, so I'd recommend this for that purpose. I'd recommend it for just a general fig. You like honey figs. You like the bigger ones that are more juicy. Yeah, this is much better, in my opinion, than brown turkey. Um, so yeah. That's Princessa, guys. What a nice name, huh? All right, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Hit that subscribe button, by the way, and check out our blog, figboss.com. We have all kinds of fig-related information there. I'm posting all kinds of stuff there just this season. I know a lot of you guys missed me on different places of the fig communities, and um, all the information that I normally would post there is going on the blog. So check it out. We'll see you guys soon. Have a good one.